As the screens on mobile devices get bigger and you get to where you actually have a screen size that's decent video playback experience, you could actually argue that the role of video versus text uh, gets different. I mean, clearly, you know, when you have a device that has a, a screen form factor like the, like the, you know, the new iPhone 4, right, uh, and the screen resolution is so crisp, you could actually argue that per sort of pixel, it's a better experience for video versus for text because the text is quite, you know, quite small. So the question is, okay, how do you create an optimized experience? Now, one of the things that Apple has done, uh, which I don't think is, is great from a consumer standpoint uh, or from a, from a developer standpoint is they force developers to make a choice. In other words, your flash web page that you built won't work right on this device or on its big brother, the iPad. So you already have to reauthor your page anyway. So a lot of people are saying, well, let me just think about my video assets in a different way. And rather than having it just be an HTML version of my page where I'll just put an MPEG, MPEG uh, uh, you know, an HTML5 version of the, of the uh, video with MPEG in it, I'll actually reauthor it in a different way designed for this screen form factor, which I think in a video context makes sense. Let me ask you, what are the opportunities for monetization around apps. One of the, the advantages, of course, is that Apple has, a, in the Apple part of it, there's a wallet built in with, you know, over 100 million people, 150 million people that have active uh, uh, credit cards and on file and that you have the ability to use them. And people have gotten used to paying 99 cents or $1.99 for these apps. It's very hard to build a very big business around that, but you can, you can amortize some of your costs associated against that. The advertising side has worked less well for mobile video, um, and that's, it's going to take time for, for that to develop. There are obviously a few people that are trying Try to build networks to deliver mobile video, but it's been very hard for them to, to get to the scale point uh, that, uh, that you have, for instance, on, on video on the PC and on the web. So you think that mobile video is more of a paid scenario now or an ad-supported scenario? Well, I think the paid scenario will get more traction than it does on the PC for micropayment thing, because essentially the iPhone particularly has a micropayment platform built in, whereas the PC doesn't. So if you have content that a consumer is willing to pay a dollar for, two dollars for, something like that, uh, the iPhone could be a good platform for that. And certainly we've seen that with the, the video downloads. But you know, clearly, you know, those consumers are faced with many choices for being able to buy things. So you've got to you've got to have a compelling value proposition. You just you just can't count on the fact that people will pay a dollar like you know they're not being paying attention. What are the opportunities uh, on the upside? side or the risks um, of publishers embracing uh, Android? Well, per capita app usage on the, the higher end Android phones like the Droid family or the Nexus One that Google sold themselves uh, or, the, or, the, or the Evo, the Sprint, uh, Sprint One, the per capita app consumption is very similar. The per capita app monetization is not as high today, mostly because there's more friction in payment. Uh, and Google is working on that both for their own efforts and through carrier billing integration. Uh, and you know, if you wanted to bet on them getting their act together, you'd probably find a somewhat less crowded commercial market place than on the Apple side. So there's much more money being made on Apple uh, in terms of uh, paid content uh, today on the iPhone than there is on the Android phones, but there's also many more people competing for those dollars. So, you know, it's one of those things where if you're, uh, particularly if you, if you see a way to get, um, uh, you know, uh, on, a on a platform where there's good carrier or billing integration, which varies widely, uh, or you're willing to sort of bet on uh, 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 Google getting it right eventually, uh, then that's going to be a good platform. But the monetization today is lagging uh, per, per, per download compared to the iPhone. You're a VC now, so tell us about um, investment opportunities that you see, sectors that you're excited about or that you're looking into. Well, I, I, uh, I'm a believer in do stuff you know things about. So I, what I know about are, is, is uh, digital media, digital video. Uh, I know a fair amount about social media, and Excel is a great place because of their, their very close relationship with Facebook. And my focus is sort of, if you look at those as three different Olympic rings, things that are that are kind of involve more, one or more of those rings, two ideally, three sometimes, is probably where I'm focusing my effort. Excel as a firm does many things. It does enterprise uh, type stuff uh, as well, has a great relationship with a bunch of history and in terms of the carrier space, uh, but its biggest success today, you'd have to say, is Facebook, which is you know right at the center of one of those rings. Few people spend time on ten or more sites, and again, this is per month, not per week. So the average number of sites that are regularly accessed is 4.5. I think I heard this morning that.